to join him meticulously. So you realize that the original intent of God was for, for man to be what? A priest. And it is the strength of your priestly role you can begin to exercise dominion. And if you check the meaning of the word kingdom, kingdom means what? A king and a domain. And the extent to which you have exercised priesthood over your territory is the extent to which you can gain influence. For some of you, you want to take over Nigeria, but yet you have not conquered lost. You have to conquer yourself first. You have not been able to conquer your roommates. The challenge today in the modern day Christianity, especially among young people, I see a lot of young people, desires of God coming for long hours of prayers, but they don't even have a routine Bible study life. They don't know the last time they checked the scripture to hear the mind of God. Are you aware that in the body of Christ currently the discernment level is at an all time low? I was chatting with a young guy that called himself a renowned prophet because, because of the peculiar nature of things. And I asked him, oh boy, what happened? And when I heard his analysis, I was caught and back. I said, even as per discernment level, you could not even discern who is a man of God and who is a fake minister of the gospel. So what are you teaching the people that are following you? So this one, this one has not come as an angel of light. Oh. Hello? Are you aware that the devil can come as an angel of light? This one has not come as an angel of light. But you cannot discern. And yet you are teaching scriptures. You are, you are calling yourself a prophet. So it was the original intent of God for man to dominate the earth. But the strength of that dominion was going to be derived from a realm that was beyond man. So anything you have to do in this life is dependent on the God factor. You have the calling to ministry, you need God. You got into a dimension by praying three hours. You will need more hours of prayers to sustain it. One of the things I tell my people is that please don't come for long hours of prayers if you can sustain two hours of prayers every day. Because you come for 12 hours prayers today, you come for 24 hours prayers today, it opens up your spiritual appetite and then you go back and you drop back to, to minus, minus 30 degrees. Your spiritual life is fluctuating it's like this, like a barometer. And then you don't know that as you open up your spirit man, there are so much that is filled within. If you had left your spiritual life on one, one hour, two, two hours of prayers on a consistent level, you would have wondered what a spiritual person would have been in three years. But when prayer is raining, 10 hours prayer, you come. Ka -ka 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 -ka. And then you come up on Facebook, we just finished 10 hours prayers.
16. Genesis chapter 8. Verse 20. If you are there, can you say amen? amen? If you are not there, can you say amen? amen. Okay, let's wait for them to catch up. Let's wait for them to catch up. Hey, the keyboard man. Can you join me in the next what, five minutes? If you are there, can you say amen? Amen. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took off every clean beast. On the line, the word word clean beast. And of every clean fowl and offered burnt offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour and said, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. And whilst the earth remained, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. You need to understand that the, the, the spiritual controls the physical. The first thing that happened after Noah offered that burnt offering unto the Lord was that there was a direct effect on the earth. The reason why Nigeria is the way it is is not because of the fact that we have evil men in the corridors of power. It's just that we don't know how to engage territorial priesthood. Let me tell you the truth of the matter is this. Teaching about territorial priesthood is different from engaging territorial priesthood. You, the, the pain in my heart is that we have a lot of teachers, preachers, and less intercessors. And if God is going to do you good as an intercessor, he will hide you for a very long time. Because premature exposure in the intercessory ministry is what makes people casualties. I will explain. The place where I reside, as a young man, you have not let her, yours is, you sell a fair damsel. And then you began to shake. I can assure you, if you come to my place, you will find many of them.
And can I tell you now, this door is a window of mess that has been opened up onto you. The next day, it is going to be more difficult for you to fast. You have not learned the way of fasting. And you think next day you are postponing your destiny. So the original intent of God for man was to what? See and what? Keep. And you will see there are two dimensions that are captured there. The role of what? A, a custodian. And the role of what? A guardian. And I will begin to show us seven layers of priesthood engagement. And as you begin to climb the ladder, the more stiffer the protocols will become. So you will see how man fell. Man fell. See, the original design of God was for man to dominate. But man fell. Like, have you seen someone that is in, uh, that finished from, he did a postgraduate degree. And then he's demoted to go and start KG1. How do you think that person will cope? You know the first challenge we have is that the things that are around him, he cannot even relate with them. Are you aware that man was created in such a way that his words will control the elements? Are you aware that man could call animals and they, were, they, they came forth? Man exercised the dominion power of God in his vocal cords. So to test on that effect, God will have to bring the animals to man to say, ah, what will you call this one? He will say, ah, this one looks like an antelope. And the Bible recorded that, so it was. So man fell from that height of glory. And man became man of man. Until man became what? Flesh. Man fell from the realm of the spirit. He entered into the realm of the soul till he became a fleshly being. That God had no choice but to destroy man in Genesis chapter 6. So part of the reason what the fall subjected us to was our first role was to start from the kindergarten level. And in prayer business, the first level you enter into is the, is the level of an intercessor. You are here and you have grown. You are up to 30 years. You don't know how to bet things in prayers. Anytime you see cockroach flying in the night, you, you, you carry your phone and be calling pastor. Your life is a cartoon. How many of you watch cartoon? You know, whatever they are doing in cartoon is not serious. So the first level is that of an intercessor. The second level God begins to do to your life is that he begins to galvanize your intercessory responsibility with the prophetic. He recruits you to the class of being a prophetic intercessor. You pray with precision. You pray with direction. Can I shock you? Your prayer levels will be full time if you lack direction in prayers. You see a man that lacks direction is a product of prayerlessness. What prayer does is that it unveils you to the vista of direction. It unveils you to the vista of revelation. And when you enter into the vista of revelation, you join into more deep realms of prayers. I see people today that say they are, they are men of the word. Glory to God. They just stay with the word. Just stay with the word. You speak the word in season and out of season and you come back with a testimony. Let me tell you, the syllabus has changed. It's, it's because of the fact that all that you have known is for yourself. How to graduate with a 2-1, how to graduate with a first class. Have you realized, do you know the most bored people on earth? Have you gone to visit the old person that has everything working? His children, they are in Dubai. They have all the degrees. They have lived life and they are bored. You know why? They didn't assess what it was internal. Let me tell you, if God was to summarize the things he, he can give you, 
in the natural. Everything he can give you in three months. And you will not need to seek him again. The reason why God had to summarize your project into eternity is so that by the time you are 80, you are still praying as though you are 20. You are building an infrastructure that is internal. It is not earth-based. So just in case you are here and you begin to size success by the size of a cathedral. Are you aware that people that built mega cathedrals, they were people that better those people in prayers? I was sharing with my guys some weeks ago. If you were to put in a distal of things, perhaps some of the many men of God today in Nigeria, and you were to place them side by side, someone like Pa SGLT, you would say Pa SGLT during his time was a failure because he only discipled about five or six people. And these five or six people were the people that pioneered the mega church moves that you see today. You hear of someone like Archbishop Benson Idaosa. You hear of someone like Joseph Ayo Babalola. You hear of many of the fathers of faith. I was even told that Brabele Akani was one of the protege of, the, of that man. And you hear of men like this. A man had to leave the comfort of, he was staying in Germany and God had to tell him to relocate to Elisha. And that was like the command that God gave to Abraham. Get the out of your contract of their father's house. You know in our day and time we we'll say, ah, demons from the father's house. I will lay in this guy. Hello. I, I wish it together. If we are together, can you say amen? amen. If I'm, I'm, I'm alone, can you say amen? So that means I'm not alone. We are joining together. So the second level is the level of what? The prophetic intercession. You can do intercessory business and you will know what product to get out of it. The reason why you have not persisted in the place of prayer is because you lack insight to what you are praying about. There are prayer projects that you don't do in three months. You do it for three years. There are pro prayer projects that you do for 30 years. That one you don't do 21 days dry, and you come down from the mountain and say, Hallelujah. The principalities will just laugh at you and say, ah, What is this one doing? They will just, what they will do is that they will just afflict you one small typhoid. And then all the food that you did not eat, you will eat times 10 of it during the sickness. How many of you, how many, you, 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 you have not done three days dry before, you now went on three days dry to try to prove a point. And then you came back from the sick bed with malaria and typhoid. And then all the food that you didn't eat, all the movies that you didn't watch, how are we together? Is my salmon too hard? All these, all these, all the movies you didn't watch, you now watch them times three. You took one step in the spirit and you took four steps backward in the flesh. That is why you are at the level where you are. And when God begins to take you higher, he will begin to show you protocols. He will begin to show you postures in the place of prayers. Are you aware that Elijah could have prayed with every other normal posture? He could have laid down on the floor praying for rain to come. But he knew that the posture to bet a rain to come was to take a, a betting posture like a woman that was giving bet. As you begin to journey in prayer, you will know that there are some prayers that you will bend your head. You will put it between your knees. That thing will take you for 12 hours. Some of you have not journeyed to the place of prayers because you have not found your prayer posture in the spirit. Some of you, you have not, you have not ca carried the capacity that is resting on your inside because you have not journeyed to who you are in the spirit. The first day I discovered, <laughs> have you ever prayed before? And after you finish praying, you discover that you have not, you have not started praying. These days, what I do is this. When I know that I have not started praying, what I just do is that I'll just be speaking quietly in tongues. You know what I'm doing. I'm trying to generate energy. I know when I begin to pray. Some days when I want to engage God, I'll pray six hours. It, I, I, my, it, I've not even started touching things. It is the content of my spirit. 
And somebody will come out and say, we pray six You didn't touch anything. The product of your prayers will be what you harness from the place of prayers. A prophetic intercessor is a wise mathematician. He knows what, he knows what two hours of prayers we do. He knows what four hours of prayers we do. He knows what eight hours of prayers we do. So he's able to concoct the prayer in such a way that will bring results. And if you are such a person that is yet praying and yet you are unwise when it comes to prayers, your project tonight is to begin to ask the Lord for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Because one of the things that will make your prayer project easy is what? Wisdom. And what? Wisdom and what? Are we here? Wisdom and what? The third level of priesthood is the level of what a watchman. You are here perhaps God is telling you I know you can pray for two hours in the evening but come and visit me around 3 a.m. in the night. It is that time that your sleeping treasure is on the highest frequency. And even the few times that you are awake, eh, your phone is on Snapchat, Telemundo, by 3 a.m. <laughs> I, I, are we together? Are we together? Anytime you experience such, just know that your life is under attack. And what you need to ask the Lord is mercy, mercy, mercy. As, 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 as mighty as God is, God is dependent on times and seasons. God will not do anything outside of times and seasons. Some of us, we are enjoying the promise of revival because people prayed. Some of you now may just labor for six hours and then you become heavily anointed. But that your anointing was a product of another man's 60 years of prayers at a, a different time quarter that was not in the timing of God. So for God to accumulate that prayer and then deposit it at a time where he wanted to do it, it was just a, a proof that you came at a time that you were most privileged. And if you are here, you are not wise. You think all that you have become spiritual is, is a product of your strength. That is the first level of pride. Pride will begin to creep into your heart. It is then, it, it, when you begin to pray, you will know that many of the measures and the grace that God releases upon you is not for yourself. If the church in Nigeria had been a territorial church that was given to intercession, we would be united. We will not take sides with denomination. We will not say, ah, this one has a 50,000 capacity. This one has 12 members. And then we'll begin to segregate. Because in the realm of the spirit, you may realize that that person with 12 members has more ranking and stature in the spirit than the person gathering a crowd. But what you now think is that it may even be that that person with the 24 members. Am I putting a, a downplay on excellence or, product, uh, or productivity in the natural? No. But if your vistas of measurement is based on natural things, you will soon be wrong. You will soon be wrong. Because you will now realize that it is possible that the devil can help you to excel in the wrong things. Have you seen someone, okay, perhaps, have you seen a child that the child grew up and he didn't all know that it was hands that they used in writing. He now started writing with the left leg. And then he grew up like that for 12 years. All the developmental milestone had been achieved and his brain has been wired and configured to a team that you write with the leg. And then he comes to the class and he's an odd figure, an odd specimen. Do you know that that thing that was naturally developed in two years, it will, it will take him another at least 10 years to unlearn and relearn. So many of you are in that category. You have judged many spiritual things from the realm of the natural. So the third level is the level of a watchman. So God begins to call you higher. 
And God begins to allot time to you. And that time is not dependent on your, on your convenience. He will come at a time where it is most demanding. It will come at a time where sleep is sweetest. I realized that God needed me to pray in the night. But all the effort by my mom to wake me up in the night proved abortive. I had my own room. So you don't... If, if you will, I have locked the door, I'll be playing loud music to ensure that I don't hear the knock. I'll sleep all through the night and wake up in the morning. It went on like that until the scenario happened and I, need, I knew that I needed God. And just in case you were eloped from the dealings of God, God will readmit you whether you are 40 years. Are you aware that there are 70 year old men eh, when they get to heaven, they will admit them in KG2. This work that we are doing here is an internal work. This calling and this preaching I'm doing, I will still be preaching there. It does not end here. That you are a banker on earth. If God has called you to be a banker, you will be a banker over there. If God has called you as an apostle here, the calling will not change over there. You will continue the work. In short, there is more work to be done. And for those of you that escaped work, and you went to Maldives to take summer beach holiday, you, you will be admitted into KG2. Have you seen a 40-year-old man in KG2 with children? How does he look like? You know, it's a comic sight to behold. And I pray may that not be your portion in Jesus' name. I say, I pray may that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. So God will begin to ask you to visit at a specific time. You will not know that for your life to assess God on a different level, there is a time quota. And let me tell you for some of you, when you begin to assess that time, the devil will fight so hard. It is that time that the love of your life that, that has missed you for three years will now call and say, ah, are you aware I've just been thinking about you? 3 a.m. in the night, oh, you will carry the phone. And then you as a lady will now say, ah, oh, I've been thinking of you too. All this while, the person was not thinking about you. You don't know that that is an attack from the pit of hell to ensure that you don't pray, you don't assess God. So you now carry the phone. Thank God that they banned midnight call. Midnight call crippled so many intercessors in Nigeria. It's part of the reason why we are, we are facing past time. Let me tell you, the scenario in Nigeria, the Nigerian scenario, the economy and the hardship, the leadership, is to ensure that we go back to the way of intercession. God blessed the church with little Nera and Kobo. We became mighty. And the granny gospel was prosperity. Today, now, if any man is giving himself to doctrine, he's giving himself to scriptures, he's look like old, 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 it's it, it what they call it, old women's fable. Somebody will come up and say, ah! He will just print a, 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 a banner and say, there are better with favor me. You will be shocked that people will still go there. And they will be looking for anointing oil and handkerchief for Nera death to favor them. Someone will, will come up on Facebook like this with so much fallacy. You know, this one, I feel I, I'm not on, on Twitter. But I, I hear, I see the snapshot of people that, that it is unreasonable to reason that way. Hello? Hello? It is unreasonable to reason that way. And the people that are unreasonable begin to reason in such a certain way. And then you now see people are still following such demeaned level of unreasonableness. It's just like you they, they tell you now, come on, more go pull hand for fire. And then you now follow the guys. Hey, fire, Abby. You now put hand inside the fire. And you'll be rejoicing inside the fire. That's how many Christians are. Just go up on Facebook, you will see the specimen. Just in case somebody comes up now, even if he's, 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 he's a chronic and, and tells you that 
Tati Scar is the way to heaven. You will see people will begin to defend him. Tati Scar is the way to heaven. That's the reason why we need to come back to the original template of what the apostolic fathers handed over to us. That's the third level. I don't want to waste much time there, but watchman, what about the night? The reason why your family is still in plague and in bondage is because of the fact that you have not been able to guard against the windows. The reason why Adam failed in his responsibility as a guardian was because he was not a watchman. I will go to the next level. It's the level of a guardian. God cannot give you things to keep if you have not been a successful watchman. And there are territories. If these watchmen sleep, there was a parable of the wheat and the tars. Hello? Hello? Are we here? There was a parable of the wheat and the tares. And the reason why that parable was put forth was because men slept and the enemy in the night came and saw tars. So the fourth level is the level of being a guardian. So God elevates you to become a guardian over a territory. That nothing happens in that family without your knowledge. For some of you, the moment you began to pray, God ushered you into that level. You skipped the first three levels. And then you do not understand the rigors that takes for, for, the, for God to bring you into the level of being a guardian. And you began to misbehave. There are strict laws for failure as a guardian. But it's not part of what I'm going to teach tonight because we don't have time. The fifth level is the level of being a custodian. I just have to rush through it. When God makes you a custodian, eh, your words become law. You are the reason why a generation will be preserved. Meanwhile, when God is calling for prayers, God is not looking for multitude to pray. God is looking for one man to pray. The revival fire that visited Scotland was tied on one man, John Knox. John Knox demanded for an entire nation and said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. You don't know the capacity that, that lies with. If Jesus, one man, could save the entire world, you don't know what you carry on the inside. If you can harness that power and align with the cross. Because of one man, Moses, God was ready to wipe out the entire Israel and start a new race with Moses. I will stop there. Those things are. Number six is the level of being an elder. The last level, the last five levels, eh? they, they, they do more with the earth realm. But an elder, you can be, are you aware that the 24 elders in heaven, they have the posture of a man. Of a man. Are you, let, me, let me not go there. They have, the elders in heaven, they are men. They are not spirits. You are shocked, Abi. The elders in heaven, they are men. They are not spirits. So, God can elevate you to the level of being an elder in the spirit. And you can begin to legislate things that are earth-based and heaven-based. So God wants to make decisions. The council of the 24 elders have to gather to validate that position of the Godhead. There is a strict organogram structure in the Godhead that is religiously followed before laws are enacted. And you begin to see them play out on the face of the earth. If, you want to sh if I want to show you the role the elders i can open to to, to the to scriptures zechariah chapter 3 and the bible showed what joshua the high priest and an angel standing by the side and the devil what accusing joshua 
The seventh level is the level of a judge. Some of you, you have heard of that word, judge. Are you aware that you as a man, you are going to judge angels? You are going to judge spirits? It is not my emphasis tonight. So I'll just give you, so we'll just, we'll just run along. So you will see that everything you do in life, is dependent on priesthood. And for you to do priesthood effectively, you need priesthood intelligence. And priesthood intelligence is a higher level. As you begin to navigate the quarters of wisdom and revelation, you will now discover that there are deeper levels of the wisdom of God. Have you ever heard of the word that how unsearchable are his ways? How deep are the wisdom, the riches of the wisdom of God? When I begin to tell you that it's not in every place you do prayers, you will now notice that there are places where prayers are concocted. You want to take over a territory as you are sent to a particular level, God will tell you in the night, 2 a.m., move to this point, pray for three hours, standing like this, looking at the sun. If you have not learned the protocols of all these basics, we still call you for three hours prayers and then in the midst of it, you are still dozing. God will not give you that responsibility. Because you, you attract infirmity upon yourself. And you will be the reason why the, the city is judged. Let me tell you, as you begin to advance in intercession, there are levels where you get to where God trusts you so much that if you fail, that generation has failed. You are not here. As you begin to journey with God, God entrusts you with so much responsibility that just perhaps you fail, you make one error. Are you aware that there is there was the error of Balaam? Are you hearing me? The error of Balaam became the way of Balaam and then subsequently became what the doctrine or what or what of what are we here there is a point in intercession where you cannot afford to fail God you have not prayed to a point where you know the reason why God had to deploy angelic functionalities to uh, help Jesus in the midst of that prayer? There was, a, there, there was a quota of prayer Jesus Christ needed to fulfill in the Garden of Gethsemane for him to triumph over death. And Jesus Christ prayed, prayed, prayed till his sweat was as great drop of blood. And God knew that if this one was left for man alone, he could not fulfill it. God had to deploy angels. Angels had to help him. There are points in your prayer journey where God will have to deploy entities to give power to your vocabulary. See, two men, no two men in this kingdom are the same. You are here as an, as an intercessor, you must show me your scars. Some of you, the reason why you ran away from intercessory business was because of the fact that you, you came into campus and God told you that. Begin to pray for two hours, three hours, and, and then my power will come upon this campus. And then you prayed after two years, your grades fell. You didn't notice that it was a manipulation from the pit of hell. And you didn't know how to address such. You now started laboring in the flesh. And then you now fell the more. So you became so helpless. And then you now forsook God. You forsook prayers. You thought that it was the prayers that you were praying. You were, how many of you are here that they are saying, ah, you are, you, are, you are doing this Christianity too much. How many of you are here? You were not praying intelligently. That's why when the enemy came and attacked you, you did not see it. 
If look, let me tell you, don't if you want to labor over a territory like a campus, a family, don't just be a nominal intercessor. That role is at least for a prophetic intercessor. So that when an attack comes that is older than you, you will be able to pick it from the realm of the spirit and say, Yeah, there's an old witch here. Let's let's address this in the night. That comes visiting the night. Not when you now pray three hours, the old witch will now come and press you down, shaking together, running over. You now wake up and say, Lord, why did you forsake me? So you need wisdom to galvanize your intercessory labors. So priesthood intelligence will involve you first and foremost understanding what it means to be a priest unto God. Back to the scripture we will rest. When God spoke to Adam, where are thou? Adam said, I hid from you because I was what? I was what? I don't want to go into the Greek and but that nakedness there is a deficiency of clothing. It is directly proportional to the to the dominion you will wield. Glory. Eh? When, you, when, 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 when you see the metaphor glory being used in scripture, you will discover that glory is synonymous with dominion. When you hear Romans begin to say, for all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God. If you check the synonyms of that word, you will see that glory relates to what? Dominion. But when you look at glory in itself, you discover that glory is a clothing, it's a garment. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a clothing, it's a garment. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 28. I, I won't, won't read the whole scriptures, but I just want to itemize a few things so that you will see why you need to be clothed. You know the reason why we groan is so that we can be what? We can be what? The reason why we groan is so that we can be what? That is the burden of an intercessor. The reason why an intercessor groans is so that he can be clothed. God has given you capacity to be able to intercede for your family and you have started seeing progress, results everywhere. God now elevates your quota to begin to intercede for your local government. And then you will now know that there are witches that are beyond your family. That they are not, they just look at what, what are these ones doing. That your business that was running so smoothly, you will now discover that two wires, just, they were just playing together and they now sparked. And the entire store that you have labeled now caught fire. Because why? You, you started something that was beyond what? The reason why some people have been afflicted, let me go back, is you want to power the, 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 the revival that is on a campus with a, I better pass my neighbor gen. Who has done that before? You know, if you plug an electric iron to I better pass my neighbor gen, one of it must either go bad. Is that the, the, the iron goes bad by the mercy of the Lord so that your, your gen will be preserved, or the gen goes bad? Let me tell you, see, by God's design, eh, even if you pray for 24 hours, it's not enough. That's why the Bible says what? Pray without what? <laughs> As you begin to grow in God, you, you would stop. When, when you reach this level that your praying around the clock is not sufficient, you will now begin to look upon a God that is all sufficient to help your insufficiency. That is when God will begin to clothe your nakedness. He will begin to give you wisdom. 
when you hear the psalmist begin to say, He touches my hand to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. There are going to be warfare that you will not see anything that will help you break it. You will learn the technology of bending steels by your hands. There are going to be warfare that will require you taking a portion of bending down. And you have to go seven times. You will go for six times. You will see results. You will say, ah, we did this. We will go again. If you are an intercessor and, you're, and the devil knows your elastic limit, he can measure you into time. The reason why some of us continue was not because of the fact that there were not things that could make us stop. But we said, I made up my mind. My, my mom has eight children. I said, if I become the useless one among the children, and you have seven that are doing well, let me become the useless one. Let me become the one that carried Jesus on this earth and failed. You have seven doing well. Perhaps if you didn't give birth to me, would you have felt bad? If you have not gone to this point, you can still be measured in no time. Maybe somebody died and you sorrowed, you sorrowed, you sorrowed. I said, ah, God, you are forsaking me. And that's the reason why you stop praying. Anything that makes you stop praying, no matter how legitimate it is, is an attack from the pit of hell and you have to fight it. For lack of time, I cannot show you the book of Exodus chapter 28 from verse 1. You will realize that God was instructing Moses to clothe Aaron with what? The priestly regalia. And it was for two reasons. It was for what? Glory and for what? Are we together? It was for what? So you will see that for you to do priesthood effectively, there is a glory that you must emanate. There is a measure of the glory of God that must rub up on you. Some of you, the reason why, hey, when you hear men like Babalola that pray for three days, don't try that stunt. You will die in the process of trying. It is good to stretch in prayers. Eh? But those ones that you hear someone that is blessing food, and he blessed for three days. He went to a mountain and he, and he, and he knelt down. And he was, he was lost in the presence of God for 40 days. Those things are real. If you try it in the flesh, you won't survive. You will find yourself in the teaching hospital. You see, the reason why these men journeyed into layers of God that was beyond time was because they found the original template of their dominion mandate. Every renowned minister of God in Nigeria today still makes reference to the prayer of Babalola. Are you saying there were no other men that prayed? Are you saying that there were no men that even prayed? If you are, if you are to put a in summation, the, their prayer life it may, may have even been more than Babalola. So, but the product of that mastery prayers could power several revivers in different dispensations. Hello, that man's three days prayers because of clothing could do something that could be registered in internet that you cannot change. So when you hear someone like Papa, Papa, Papa Adebo, you say, Father, I thank you for my children. Bless them. Multiply their bread and help their life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And then you as a teenager, you now go and stay with him. You will see him wake up in the morning and say, Father, I thank you. For... And it's five minutes prayers. You will now adopt five minutes of prayers as your lifestyle. 
I pray the devil does not capture you on the road. The reason why that man, five minutes of prayers will produce result is something that he's wearing. And that thing, you don't, you don't, you, 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 you don't, you don't buy it in the market. It's a product of years of labor. Years of sacrifice and trust. To measure for all of your infirmities. You know one of the infirmities of an intercessor is that number one is that there is a knowledge gap. I don't want to go into the infirmities of being an intercessor. There are too many things to touch. But I want us to pray. Is that you don't know what to pray as you ought. The first thing is what? You don't know. And you don't know how to pray that prayer as you ought. Just imagine they gave you a question to answer. And you first and foremost, you don't know the question. Neither did you know how to answer the question. You know, if you have known it, eh, there is a tendency that you can attempt. One of the men in the Bible that faced such a scenario was Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar called all the magicians in Egypt and said, I have dreamt a dream. And the dream is taken away from me. Seek for a man that can Tell me the dream and what? <laughs> this was one of the men that operated as an intercessor. He could go into the realm of the spirit and download the dream a man, another man dreamt. He downloaded the dream and came and he interpreted it to the, the man. And do you know what they said then? They said, the, the spirit of the Holy Ghost does well in him. And it is the same Holy Spirit that dwelt in that guy that you people are using to play like this. The Holy Ghost that was meant to help your infirmity in helping you in the knowledge gap of the what to pray and the how to pray it. A man in another civilization, once and again the Spirit of God came upon him and because of that singular reason he ruled in four kingdoms four kingdoms so you realize that the reason why god has to give us the glory garment is to cover our inner in deep weaknesses which have enumerated what what to pray about and how to pray about it For some territories, it will take 15 years of steady intercession to break something. And you as a person, now you now saw someone that went, he gave, he gave you a tale of Lagos State that he went into Lagos and did seven days dry and Lagos opened up. And then you now come to Zambia and you now say, oh, seven days dry. Zambia opened up. Where is the God of Elijah that opened up Lagos State? You have failed in the knowledge equation of the what. You know what to pray about, but you don't know the how. Okay, let's 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 identify the what. Perhaps the prayer posture of that man was to be praying the night from 12 to 6 every day, every day. And he did that with dry fast and then Lagos opened up. You have not asked the Lord for the template on how to conquer your territory. And that you are just praying blindly. In this prayer enterprise, every man will have to join into his own portion in God. All of us will start praying. But the spirit of wisdom and revelation will start galvanizing us into our own prayer labors. All of us can be praying here now. As we begin to join in the place of prayers, God will begin to, to, to itemize us. This one, oh yeah, you pray by 2 a.m. This one, you pray by 5 a.m. This one, watch in the noonday and declare over the territory. And by the time every one of us becomes strong in our roles in God and we come as a corporate assembly, that's where we can raise a voice as a territorial church and things will shift in the territory. In our day and time, everybody wants to be an apostle. 
no one wants to be a teacher. No one wants to even encourage. So if everybody becomes an apostle, who will become the evangelist? I know the apostle can do all the works, like they said. But let me tell you, each of these offices, their homes is different. The kind of brutal anointing that is upon evangelist Rehan Bonke, if you have to be an evangelist to do that kind of thing. And you have to, you have, to have labored in the evangelistic office for years for different layers of the anointing to be coming upon you. Let me tell you, and this is a secret I didn't want to even share, but I feel led to share. You are here and you are 20 years and you have not fulfilled a quota of spiritual levels. Let me tell you, you have missed a mark in the spirit. It's just like perhaps you are 25 or 26 and then you enter into university. You know that as a lady, entering into university at that time is already late. Because before you graduate, you was already 31, 32. And then you know that you are not as beautiful, as young, as vibrant as you are. So you will know that that time you are entering into the university is already a late time. You have to be paid for lost time. But many of us, we come into God very late. And we hear things very late, but we are not ready to go the extra mile to labor into God. For every eight category, there is a level and a dispensation of grace that rests upon. That is why you see the fathers of faith. God gives them their strata. Pastor, here the boy, whether you pray and fast, dry for the next 90 days. Eh? What God has given him, he won't give you overnight. Have you seen young people coming to to, to talk down fathers. I, I, I believe they are not here. I believe they are not here. On Facebook. You, you, you just come or you, you are just loud. God gave you the revelation of John 3.16. Many of the most revelatory men, eh, they don't even read their Bibles. Research has shown it. I was told Reverend Dr. Omar Pai reads about 76 chapters of the Bible every day. 76 chapters. If you listen to that man, there is nothing you will jot down. But you have not opened your Bible for the past three months, and then you come up with John 3 16 Revelation, you start writing it. And then you start castigating men that have labeled. And you know the home, when he comes up to the stage and says, he sings that his song, and says, Father, 200 miracles. I don't want it to be more than 200. Because if he, if he doesn't regulate it, that meeting can go wild. With the things that God has told me, I, do you think that miracles happening in a meeting is dependent on a meeting? Are you aware that there is a realm of priesthood in God where you can legislate? And no sickness will be permitted to enter into a city. And it will not be because that you gathered in a meeting. It's not because of the fact that we gathered in a meeting and then we were casting out devils. First and foremost, how did the devils come into the territory? It was because men slept. People that were supposed to watch over the territory. And then the, the, the demons now stroll to and fro around the territory looking for dry they were in dry places looking for who to to alight upon and they found some youth ignorant youth just going about their normal life and they ah they say, oh, this is a good specimen to start from and they alighted upon that and perhaps by the mercy of god one of them now found his way to the church and that's the reason why we are doing deliverance Meanwhile, we are supposed to be banishing infiltrations of spirit into territories. Just imagine if we understood our corporate ranking in the spirit. How mighty would that be? 
Imagine if all of us here knew our watches in the day where God visits us. And then you say yes. You will declare like Elijah. Say, before God whom I stand, let there be no rain or dew according to my word. That man has stood before the press. He knew where to declare and alter that thing. It is when you are clothed, spiritual intelligence will begin to come upon you. One of the things that you will notice that you are beginning to receive little measures of the clothing is that you begin to walk circumspectly. You are here as an intercessor and, and the burdens of desolation is not upon your shoulders. Because you are 25 and you pray for death years, you have become the reigning apostle. You open a meeting and then two people, they were epileptic. They fell down. They, they were just dancing. They fell down. And then you are a global evangelist. And then the next time we see you, we see you on the white suits, you do your hand like this. The crowd that we don't know where they came from. The reason why the church is lean is because of the fact that we have exalted the manifestation of the spirit above the work of intercession. Meanwhile, the manifestation of the spirit are to enable. See, let me tell you. Principalities are not impressed by our manifestation. Have you ever... Oh, God. Pastor Josh, I've realized that the devil can allow a man to be increasing in the anointing and <laughs> the territory will be polluted. I just check the Nigerian church, for instance, now. Okay, for instance, have you not seen Lagos? Will you doubt that there are no anointed people in Lagos? Check. Just check. Will you doubt that there was a season in America that they were anointed people? But did you see that the anointing didn't affect the geopolitical terrain of America? That the even the, 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 the things that shaped territory, we started losing it. Hollywood. Are you aware that Hollywood was not plagiarized by demons? Hollywood started as a Christian moving, moving stuff. And I, I, I don't know the story so well, but it was a Christian stuff. And then at some point, the person that was like the overseer of Hollywood came to the church and said, begin to give us curriculum or scripts on which to act. And then the church was not prepared to give scripts. It was the people of the world that started giving scripts. That was how Hollywood became infiltrated. And there are all manner of things they are being released. You know why priests lack it. Hey, you are calling into the deliverance ministry. There are there are demons, plenty of demons in Hades, in trillions. If you are not wise, eh, are you getting it? You'll be getting excited that you are casting out demons every Sunday, and you are doing ministry. It is when you are 70, you realize that you were old and your back was aching you and you didn't achieve anything. Okay, for those, Pastor Josh, say you know, say if you treat a person, if you treat someone and then the person comes back, you will have to query your diagnosis and change plan of management. Even if that was what you read in the textbook, you have to do an investigation, you have to check again. But it's only in church that we don't check. So somebody can be doing deliverance every Sunday and is excited that we are going global, we are on TV now. But the measurement of the church, the ecclesia, is, to, is how much influence we have exerted on the territory. One man, John Knox, cried for revival upon the land of Scotland. He said, give me Scotland or I die.
Without the glory garment, eh, the devil will explore all of the elements of your infirmities. All of the elements of your infirmities will be explored. And the only way you can be preserved from the infirmities is that you are clothed. And I pray tonight that someone here will be clothed in the name of Jesus. Before we pray, as I draw this session to a close, because tomorrow I will give us some of the criteria for intercession. Because priest, being a priest is intercessory business. You have not learned how to dust your mouth to be praying mechanically for two hours. You need to play Benny Hinn song on the background to feel a float. You have not started praying. No. Yes, sir. You know, you know, you need to do. You need to. You, you need to play those chants. We chant in the Holy Ghost. Ah, ah you have to chant. You have to, your prayer time. You have chanted for three hours. And then you have for thirty minutes. And you are not dozing. The devil has summarized you to chant prayer. Eh? Prayer is different from chanting. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Am I talking to someone? Prayer. Are you aware most of our long hours of prayers these days is, is like this? We are just doing something. We are doing something. And we call it 10 hours of prayers. When last did you see people coming for altar call and they were groaning, weeping? When last did you see that? And it's not a cause for concern. These days you can tell people, oh, just come, just come, just come the way you are. Just come, just, just come. The, the place is jammed. Just AC, blue light. Those things are good. You see someone will come up like, oh, don't worry, after you give your life to Jesus, we'll take you out to the shower, my hot spot. We'll just give you, give you cold stone ice cream. We'll, we'll give you stuff. We'll give you, we'll give you stuff. And, and then your mind is prime. You see somebody coming out with his girlfriend by the side, smiling. As a Lord Jesus. That's what salvation has been reduced. The basics, the, the only thing that we have as Christians, it has been taken away. Sal the salvation experience. People don't know even what salvation. Are you aware that <laughs> somebody can come up on you know that guy now? He can come up on Facebook and say. You may not be saved, but you can still go to heaven. You, you, you can still stand up. People, I need people who argue. You don't. You need to see the level of intellectual deprivation that we have today amongst young people. Blessed are you that you are hearing things from people that have journeyed, and they are still journeying. Number one, how to legislate and exercise government over a territory. And before when I begin to say a territory, don't go and say you want to conquer a new group. Eh? Territory, what? It starts from what? Jerusalem to what? To Judea to what? To what? Let's go again. From what? To what? To what? To what? You will not, you are not, you, are, you, you won't become so creative. You will not develop a new formula. You want to open a mega church. God will have to test you with discipling five men for three years. And if you now see your friend that's jumped up and started doing cutting corners to ensure that you know these days now this facebook thing is making us feel as though we are doing something i'll be very honest if you see look 
intercessory business is secret. It cannot be changed. If your roommate catch you praying loud, you have not found a place in God where you can pray quiet. In, in another level of quietness that you cannot be caught. My goal always in prayer is that I will pray and not be caught. You, you always to pray and be caught. That's why you have not done anything. One of my friends came and stayed with me for almost two years. He said, must find me pray. I made up my mind that I was going to develop a way of praying. So I, I will be up. And meanwhile, my room, I don't like it being lit. I like it being dark. So you won't see me pray. So I'll, I'll, I'll just bury my... There's a post. I'll just... Like, I will not leave that post. I'll just be there. And what I'm doing, this one is not praying with breath. I'm just breathing. Look, when you know how to engage God on the inside, you know that it's not what you say here. The weight of what you produce is here. It's in your heart. And you are traveling to the high heavens. Perhaps you are here. I'm not trying to discourage you from not praying loud. Maybe your strength is praying loud, but there is a better way to pray. Because... If you are really going to make progress in intercession, you will discover that your praying loud will shortchange you to an allotted time. You have to pray loud so that you will not disturb the neighbors. There are so many regulations that involve praying loud. You have to go to a high mountain before you can pray. You have to cross a Red Sea before you can what? And the devil will ensure that there are many Red Seas to cross. And the devil will ensure that there are many high mountains to what? And the devil will ensure that you stay in a compound where there are neighbors that are antagonistic to loud prayers. So what will you do in such a context? You will not pray. So you have to read, you have to develop a, a system that will ensure that you are perpetually subjected to prayers. Number one, God has sent you to a territory you must operate with a saint mentality. The, the reason why I have to go through the syllabus of priesthood rank is when you are the level of a guardian, eh, you know the buttons to press in the spirit. You know the buttons not to press. The church in Nigeria, eh? The church in Nigeria does not need more than seven guardians. If we have just seven guardians that have risen in stature and they come together like this and they join hands together, God can kill everybody in the Asura Villa. I just woke up one morning and discovered that an angel of death has passed over Asura Villa and everybody is dead. That's how priesthood is. I was asking the Lord one day, and I was saying, Lord, does it mean that you are you depend on our fifty thousand crowd to, to do a thing in Nigeria? And I said, No. He now began to ask me, all these Illuminati guys, how many are there in their numbers? There are few. And before you join that cycle, you, you have to have gone through stages. You have to belong. The highest orders, they are not more than twelve, they are not more than seven. And those ones are the ones that control all the systems in the world. And then the church, our numbers count for nothing. Our numbers count for nothing. Because we don't understand how the realm operates. And these men in those spheres, they understand laws that they don't break. Some of them, some of them, some of them, they have not, they have not seen a woman for 45 years. And you, you are here, you are back here with lust. It was a naked picture that you popped up on and your heart became defiled. And you want to take over a city. You want to take over, like this, like this. They'll just come and they'll just shake you. They'll just, ah, let's shake, let's shake, let's shake it today.
small loss. You have not conquered your Jerusalem. You want to go and take Samaria and the ends of it. Start first. That is why you have you have you have encountered demons. Demons that were strolling on dry places. They, they, they were doing their normal businesses. You now went and introduced demons in dry places into your life. So you must walk as a sent mentality with someone that has a sent mentality. Have you seen people that walk with a sent mentality? Have you seen people that are criminals? Higher assassin. Are you aware that higher assassin, professional higher assassin, they, they, they are smart guys. They, they have a very good language they know how to talk smooth shake you they don't move around you can never trace them and their goal is to ensure that their mission is accomplished god sent you to that campus and then you want to make friends with all the campus fellowship president and you think that's how revival will come that's why the revival died and tarried for another 10 years you thought it's going to come through the campus fellowship. God told you, okay, be praying, be praying in this place. And you said, oh, let's do a big meeting, a mega meeting, and invite a rainy man of God. That's why revival has not come. You are part of the reason why we are begging God for revival. An instruction God told you, you want to do things in the flesh, spiritual things in the flesh. You now went. And gathered all the campus fellowship presidents. And then after two years, they now started fighting themselves. I think, I think perhaps you were a victim of that. They now started, and they didn't know where the fight came from. They didn't know that it was coming from a realm that was unseen. Just to ensure that nothing works. A set mentality. God may be calling you, or you have been praying for two hours every night. It is on the strength of obedience to that instruction. You, you may not even see a result after two years. It's what you have done. A generation will enter into that economy and they will begin to launch into God. The thing, the thing about intercession is that sometimes you need your eyes to be open to see the volumes because if your eyes are not open, you will easily be discouraged. You say, ah, I have been praying, I have not been seeing results. Especially when you're doing something territorial. You see someone that wakes up in the morning, breakfast prayer, and say, Lord, a job. One of the first things that happened in my life when I gave my life to Christ, early days, eh, was that I could see clear cut vision. I told my mom at a young age about a specific work that the state was going to embark on in clear cut graphic. I gave her the time, the timing. I told her the exact location. It was then my mom began to believe what was called the prophetic in my life. When after some years, that thing happened exactly. I don't see visions too often. I hear God. I receive things through hearing. A lot. I receive their inspiration. But if I see, it is sure, it is here and in me that it's going to happen. And that one, I didn't pray for it. It came, that was the first corridor I strode into. And are you aware that many people have come around that they have become seer? You are now major one. Go deeper, man of God. And you can do that for 20 years. And the territory will just be looking at you like a comic figure. The real work of ministries is intercession. Jesus, at the zenith of his ministry, he was casting out devils, healing sick, raising dead. The Bible recorded that every morning after a great while before day, he will go to a solitary place and what? And what? 
Was he praying to manifest? No. Some of you, the reason why you are continuing in prayer is so that you can manifest, you can move in, in power. And then power came, it became the reason why you stopped praying. Some of you, the reason why you are praying is so that you can enter into a world of knowledge. And then you enter into a world of knowledge. And a world of knowledge came and then you stopped praying. The same mentality. Number two, you must understand the seasons of your showing forth. When John was asking Jesus, are you the one to come or should we wait for another? There was a mark and a register in the spirit of a particular statue of a man that will be the Messiah that will deliver Israel. So God is sending it to a particular territory, not because of the fact that he has not deputed the grace to deliver that territory, but he wants you to mature, to be able to wield the scepter. So he tells you, go on that hiding for three years. Don't say a word. Just be praying. Don't even raise anybody. Don't see some of you. The reason why your intercession labor has become slow. It's because of the fact that you are trying to carry people that were not part of the body that God gave you. God gave you a personal body. You are not trying to make it corporate. That's the reason why you have, you have received so many wounds, stabs. That's why I've took you now. That's why I've took you here. You carried what was personal and made it corporate. There is a time for showing forth. In medical school, if you if, if you if you don't graduate, even if you wrote all the exam and you didn't write the last exam, you will not make it as a doctor. Some of you, you have read the scripture back to back, and you are thinking that that's how you measure up to the fathers of faith. Eh? You have read scriptures back to back. You quote them. Have you heard people that talk like uh, Bishop David Oyedebo? I say, just take the word and, and you, 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 you will get it. When we started winners, we are about 12 members. And then you go and scroll up the sermons and you start talking like David Oyedebo. I'm a global world changer. You start speaking positive things. You don't know that man has labored in the spirit for years. And many of the attacks you faced was because you were speaking what men encountered in the spirit. And you were, you were saying them up. That's why your register now appeared in the spirit. And I say, ah, Jesus we know. Paul we know. May the sons of Skiva not visit anyone here tonight in Jesus' name. So the sons of uh, may, may uh, sorry, may demons not attack. The demons they were on their own. They were on their own. They were doing. Just like you as a person, you want to go and do an experiment. Then you not go and stumble on the madman of Gadarin. You know that guy had legions. May you not experiment with fire in the name of Jesus. Number three. Number three, you, you have to be an intelligent student. You have to study the weakness. You have to study the weakness and the patterns. That are resident in that territory, and you have to rebel against it. Some of you, you came on campus, and you didn't know that the campus was rigged by immorality. These days, I hear people pray in tongues and still, still commit immorality. Oh, am I of the old stock? Am I alien? Am I, am I reading ninety eighty something news? It's happening, right? People speak in tongues and commit immorality. 
See, let me tell you, a city, a territory that is rigged, eh? a territory that is rigged by immorality, eh? let me tell you, I should begin to pastor people. If you don't have discernment, the devil will bring in one of one of the person into the food. And then the person will begin to sponsor things. Begin to sponsor things. I was told, I was told of a certain man of God in this in this nation that there was a time in his life as God began to increase him in measures of the anointing. It was so heavy. It was like in a short season there was massive shift. Then there was one woman. She was heavily wealthy. At that point in the ministry, the ministry needed one millionaire for just one small project like that. And then the woman called this certain minister of God and said, "Come to Abuja. Let's see. Let's talk." I mean, a hotel such as Sheraton. She booked it so that it could be exclusive. Booked. That came in. Ah, so what I just need to do is that I want us to go on a vacation for like three weeks or one month. You give the church to your stand pastor. Just let's have a good time. You have been sweating on the field. You need to look good, man of God. Ah, just let's go around the world. Let's let's be some places. I said, but who will now take care of these people that are pastoring? I said, forget all these things now. You know, is it not one million you need? Don't worry. She came, brought out her check, and wrote a check of one billion. This is not, this is not hearsay. I heard it, heard it from an un- unthetiquated source. One billion. The reason was what? To sleep with her. The guy now said, ah. You, thought it's been, if you don't know where you need one million desperately. And then you cannot even raise 50,000. And then one billion is staring in the face. You'd be like, oh boy. Oh, just do this thing sharp, sharp. Now we'll go ask God for forgiveness. Come back. Hallelujah. And the Lord blessed the touch. And we have increased in size. He, 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 he was, he now went back. I said, don't worry, I won't rush into it. Go and think about it. Sleep over it. Give me, give me three days. The check is already here. He wanted to elope with the check. He said, he let now say, I know what you're already thinking about. This place is heavily garrisoned. There's no way you can escape to. Before you get to the exit door, they will capture you. They'll cut the long story short. That was not a temptation to resist too easily. But the guy had to make up his mind and say, if he's going to serve God, Suffering, he's going to serve God suffering, and then he said, To oh, hell with you and your one being walked out. I said, If God decides to fund his work, let him fund his work. If he decides not to fund his work, we will, we will clap hands and praise the Lord. Are you aware that two years after that woman died? That woman was diagnosed with HIV, she had HIV, she wanted to give the past. So an entire ministry that is feeding nations of the earth would have been closed down because of one minute pleasure and enjoyment. You don't know how costly your sins at that level is. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, you know the reason why the Lord is hard. See, some of you, you have become humble, eh? But there is still a tiny rope of pride in you, and the Lord is breaking it with hammer. Oh, a tiny rope that is supposed to be smiling and blowing air. He carries hammer and and sledge, and he's hitting tiny thread of pride. You know what that tiny thread of pride can do? It can lead, mislead a generation if you rise the rank of of, of an intercessor. The reason why we labor for doctrinal correctness and purity so that just a slight it can lead a generation astray it is after 100 years you now realize that an entire generation left true of us many of the things that were battling as doctrinal diseases through church history came as small small assumptions presumptions and people became presumptive with scriptures, became creative 
with what God handed over. You must understand the loopholes in the East. One of the things that, that plagues young people is pride and mammal gain. If you make up your mind that you are going to be someone that is not going to be given to lucre or the doctrine of Balaam, you will look like a Jew. You will even see people that you disciple in ministry buying big cars in this. Sister Rejoice, am I right? They will not come, they will come and flaunt it in your front, and you now look like, ah, oh boy, this is your God self, no, the answer by fire. Mm. The light of God that is fire in 29 seconds now. This is your whole fire self. And many years. Mm. In this territory is the is the omega the omega God that answers sharp, 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 sharp. Jehovah, sharp, sharp. Jehovah sharp sharp. Obi money, Kubana money. That's what is raining now on social media. I didn't know what was happening until after. Of, of greed and haste in you. I tell you, 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 you want to program yourself to live against the things that have enslaved the territory. In every territory, there are slave masters. There are slave masters in every territory. So you have to know the slave master that controls that territory. And you have to begin to engage a priesthood that is counteracting what is coming from that territory. <laughs> Some of you, 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 you are a minister and you are beginning to become too comfortable. This is our, this is our day and time. Now, if a young man begins to ride, they ride the jeep, God cannot send him back to begin to ride Pijot. He cannot. Say demotion in the rank. What, what, what we have summarized ministry as is, is money. It's fame. And then maybe the number that God does and then building. They now come up and they say, All these people that are talking, but well, how many people are they got? As our number here, if God decides we can invoke the parliament of heaven, and the reason why anything will happen in Enugu will be what we decide here. I don't want to push that one too far. Number four. You must learn who the gatekeepers are. I've told us the gatekeepers, they are in between the level of the guardians and the custodians. I didn't go too much into that. But for every territory, there is a gatekeeper. Are you aware in the book of Psalms 24? You don't take territories with keys. Oh. They said, the psalmist was saying, lift up your head, O ye gate, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. That the king of glory may come in. They knew that it was the king of glory that was coming. These guys now said, who is this king of glory? We want to know the identity before. Who do you think you are? How many of you, 
I've read keys to prayers. Is there any best? We need a book that seven keys to conquer Enugu. Uh, seven keys in prayers to conquer Enugu. This is not just we need we, 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 we need our book, Pastor Josh. Seven keys to conquer the north. Seven keys. Then you see people rushing. Oh, we have found a key. That's why in prayers there is no key. There is no key. Our Christianity has been summarized into keys, locks, principles. And the things that you call principles were product of a man's life that he had lived over, over time and he didn't realize that it was a nature of God that so, that so crystallized in his vessel. And people are now calling him principle. You must understand who the gatekeepers of those territories are. You want to take over a territory, there are men that have labored and they may be in hiding. You may not know them. They may look so despised. Are you aware that Jesus, it was Hannah that labored for Jesus. But who received the manifestation? It was Mary. But the woman that labored for the child to come was what? Are we still together? Are we still together? In every territory, there are gatekeepers. In every nation, there are gatekeepers. The reason why Nigeria is the way it is is this. The reason why Benzi Yidawza had so much influence in Nigeria was because an angel, a high-ranking cherub, was assigned to his ministry. And there was a throne that he could decree things and it would come to pass. God had to take back that high-ranking cherub because he knows that we were not serious. In a particular state in Nigeria, I was told that all the association of Christian people, they were fighting over 20 million. You know, election period, 20 million. I mean, churches were fighting. Churches were... That's what the church has been reduced to. Kobo, Nera, Kobo, Kobo. We sold our, our vote because of pointing an entire state, the Christian body in the state sold their franchise because of 20 million. As a young person now, you know when they begin to evaluate you, I say, ah, this is your prayer that you are praying, Zeb. What will you gain? They will evaluate you and say, what, what? By the time they begin to evaluate you, like, and you fall for it. You didn't know that they had measured you into time. Number five. You must understand the sacrifice that sustains priesthood in that sphere. It is one of the things that many people are not willing to tell you. There is a price for the anointing. In as much as God wants to use everybody, eh? it's only those that have died. I, I don't want to give us the protocols of death. It's, it's, I'm just trying to touch so many things because we need to pray. There is a price to pay. There is a sacrifice to pay. Reverend Dr. Omar by one day lost two of his children. And then the Lord told him, don't cry about it. Just go and bury them. I think he was going for a meeting. He told him, well, go to the meeting and preach. When you finish preach, you come back and bury your two children. He said recently that he got to a point and he was mocked. And, and, 
and he told the Lord, Lord, if you will not use me, Kuku kill me, just kill me. It's, it's a shame to be living as an embarrassment. Perhaps your life is in that scenario. This is the best time to cry out to the Lord. You are at the lowest low. That is where the energy is. He that has fallen fears no fall. You are at the lowest low. You, there is nothing to be ashamed of now. It's a time to grow. You, 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 are a, you are a Deborah here. You have not learned how to grow. You have not learned how to wield your self time in the spirit. Show you are aware that there are so many Deborah armies everywhere. Is Esther is Deborah or is Esther? Which other woman in the Bible again is there? Anna. Oh, Anna, not to be read like that. You know to be read like that. You know to be read. Those two. So either is Deborah or is Esther. And we don't know that it was not the nomenclature of their names that brought deliverance. It was priesthood. What we are now calling him is names. We just know his names. Perhaps you are here. See, the thing is this. What have you given up for the sake of the gospel? Many of you would have heard it recently. My father in the Lord, at his peak of promotion, God told him resign and go on full time ministry. If you understand how much is being paid in a month and the kind of ministry that he does that is highly sacrificial. You are pastoring young people that are very volatile. He said that marriage will displace them, job will displace them, or something. You, you understand what I mean? Just imagine you have so heavily invested your life and your resources over somebody for five years, and the person has become a colossus in the spirit. And then, marriage, job, transfer. Or the ones that do not they, they like making a proof by burning their hand they will say god called them they will not go and start something that like god didn't approve and then you will still have to mentor them and still help them to start that is the kind of ministry he does so it's a heavily sacrificial ministry so if you are doing it there is no reward there is no glory in it that's why many of the ministries in nigeria they have they have left young people there is no hope in those ministries that's why this ministry is here to help so if they are telling you give it's not for her at the peak of his, his promotion god said resign from that job and he had to resign And I was told that, are you aware that it was people, someone outside the country that heard the story? Are you getting a group of people decided that times two of that money will be paid to him every month and that same salary will be paid to mama. If he had not obeyed God, would he have stumbled into that economy? And meanwhile, you know definitely that money that is even is not it's not for himself. Many of you God told you die, but you wanted to carry your life by your side. You don't know that it is in dying that you rise through priesthood. As you travel through priesthood, there are corridors of death. It is layer of death and death and death. You are not ready to die. You still have so much life. You are still powerful.
you don't know the sacrifice of death and you want to bear the glory and perhaps you are here that singular thing that God is saying you lay down perhaps it's a relationship you have been so soft in it and God is telling you lay this thing down and see me move in your life but you have been struggling on that matter for three years and God is saying tonight is the night of decision It's the sacrifice that sustains the priesthood. I cannot go on and explain. It's literal through scriptures. Do you know what rose Abraham in the rank? God had to swear by himself. He swore. God had to swear that in blessing I will bless you. And in multiplying I will multiply you as the sand on the seashore. It was after he took his only son Isaac and laid him down the altar. You want to journey as a man that hey, forget about taking territory if you are not a man of sacrifice. Just, just serve the Lord with fear and trembling and go to heaven. Are you can just just clap and clap your hands and praise them. You just be doing that every Sunday. You come to church, buy one pijot car and be riding. Just be good. We have so many of them all around. And the configuration of Christianity, I mean genuine Christians, are there are more than 98% that are around that corridor. That's why we need men of that's why the Christians that are that are champions for God in the in, in, in the kingdom, in this world, this is what they are few. They are few. And any man that that emerged, he, he he paid the price. If you come close to them, they will tell you that this was the price. This was what happened that took me to where I am. You know what? Many of them are you aware that whether you try to force many of the the big men of God in Nigeria, what God has given to them, He has given to them. That's the reason why they can still steal fun. That's the reason why God's dealing upon the younger generation will be harder. Because he has seen the propensity of error in the older generation. And he wants to cope and ensure that before he releases any measure of the anointing upon your life, that you are a trusted vessel that he can trust with this. There are people in Nigeria that are preaching from place to place. And they are traveling with ladies. The anointing has not dried. And they have understood that the, the callings and the gift of God are without what? Repentance. If the only thing they have not succeeded in doing is to establish a doctrine out of it. Oh, you know, with that kind of followership, if they choose to establish a doctrine from that thing, are you aware that there will be people to sponsor that doctrine, that, that gospel? You just somebody will say, I will give 100 million to sponsor the books. Just the same way this guy, I make both to measure his name, Danny Freeze. That guy is a, is, I, sorry to say, it's one of the first times I have done. He's a clown. And people, he comes up and he begins to curse people. And there are people that are paying him to be on that platform. To be to be insulting fathers and then you see young people that are devoid of understanding hey! the fathers of faith know whether you insult he or the boy what god has given to him he has given to him it does not change and then lastly as we begin to pray you must understand the stronghold and city of refuge see I, I don't want to give us scriptures because we will not close. 
Let me be very honest with you. As an intercessor, you will grow weary one day. Okay. If you don't have someone that you can come to and say, oh, oh, they shot me the leg. Oh, hey, today, come and suture my wound. <laughs> you will just realize that you are in a desert and you are in need of water. And there is no water to quench your thirst. That's how intercessory business is. You must know your city of refuge. Because there will be, there will be, there will be wrath. Are, are you aware that Paul said he, he fought with the beast of Ephesus? These were not, they were not, they were not spiritual beasts though. It's just in case perhaps your, your theology tells you that they were, they were spiritual. It's not beasts in heavenly places. Are you hearing me? <laughs> perhaps someone will come up and say they were beasts in heavenly places. They were physical beasts. He fought with them. You must understand your city of refuge and you must stay there continually. You must understand those ones that pour water into your soul and you must learn to go and hide for a season. The city of refuge of Elijah was Brook Cherit. It was, it was by that cherubim, cherubim tree, Abby. And he was able to assess the mind of God when the mind of God was scarce. You must be able to find that place where God visits you regularly. Once and again, you have to go there and say, Lord, naked I came into the world and naked I returned. Where are you in this equation? If you don't have that place where you can run to and be refilled, you will run out of energy very soon. I don't know where we brought this mentality of running services all through the year in December. That you, you, because of pastoral duty, you cannot have one or two weeks to go and retreat and eat momo with the family. Away from pastoral responsibility. They have to be calling you pastor. That is how many people have pastored. Pastored people. And they have left alignment. They are preaching from leftovers of encounters that they had 20 years ago. You ran away, shed your skin. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your truth. One minute, can you leave for those? You rain, you rain. Don't stand, just sing the song. You wish and die your skin, Kadosh. You are mighty. You rain, you rain, you rain. You rain. Kadosh, you are mighty. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Kadosh, you are mighty. Just in case God is calling you to any of these seven spheres. You want to go into business world. And you don't understand the slave master that colonizes people there. Say, I want to be a, a giant for the kingdom in the business space. You don't know that it's mammon and greed. They will shoot into your heart first. It is when you begin to do business, you now discover that there are more intelligent ways to swindle money from people. As a Christian, you come up to church and say, Hey, hallelujah! The Lord has blessed me today. You have not learned how to say no to the riches of Egypt. And you want to conquer the mountain of business. You have not learned how to say no to the gold head from Babylon. Hey, oh, 
you don't understand the Babylonian system, you want to conquer the business world. Just be selling ice cream and serve Jesus with fear and trembling. You will be a good, you will be a good set. Don't forget this kingdom thing. You we don't don't worry, we'll talk about the kingdom tomorrow. Hey, you think kingdom is for you know these days is the kingdom age. Kingdom, kingdom. When you hear kingdom next time, you'll be afraid to mention it. Because as you are mentioning it, many things are dying. Just there are so many things. As you are mentioning kingdom. You want to conquer the mountain of media. You have not learned how to handle lies. You know, they, will, they will tell you, oh, if you write this propaganda against this one, you will, you will sell it. You will go viral. Are you aware of many of the things that are mainstream media? They are lies. Why is it that it is, it is lies that sell most in, 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 in the mainstream media? Are, are you not surprised? If they say somebody gave 100 million to widows, it will not trend. Though. But if you hear that a certain pastor, even if it's not true, but by, by the time, are you aware of this, this now? Because they know that blocks they sell. Any strange fellow that does a crime, they will say a certain pastor. They, maybe they may withhold the name. They will say a certain pastor. It's because they know that it will attract bloggers to that site to come and read that story. And then you now enter the site and you now discover that the story was actually false. How many of you have been victims of such? You just went, because of the catching phrase. You want to enter into the corridor of government and you have not conquered the greed for power and control. Again and again, God has called you to the mountain of government. See, your rights, you'll be robbed of your rights. I can give you two scriptures. Joseph was to be the prime minister. He was robbed ever several time and again. He was thrown into the prison. He knew that he was called to be a king. Just in case that is the cycle you are going through, don't manipulate it. I'll go through the classes till you finish. By the time you finish, eh, the, the throne will be vacant and it will be so obvious that there is no body that can fill this throne. Because when Joseph appeared before Potiphar and he had interpreted the dream, he said, who, who, who is in this kingdom that can? That is as discreet and, and, and wise as that. He himself that was in the throne knew that he was a figurehead. He said, it's only in ranking. Is, is it in the Bible? Are we together? Hello? Are we still together? You want to conquer the sphere of family and you are still thinking about yourself your own ah, one of the things that does not help family grow is selfishness yeah, you, you, you are married or you intend on getting married, just know that you are going to be living a different economy of life. None of the things that are in that family will be yours again. Can we be upstanding? You want to conquer the mountain of education and you have not dealt with pride. The reason why I'm showing us these things is so that as God begins to call you to that mountain, you have to know the principality that is the slave master over that sphere. And in your heart, you have to begin to engage it. Perhaps you are, you are an intellectual, you are an icon. You have read world acclaimed journals. And then you have become bogus and locked in yourself. You are part of the reason why revival tarries. Can you begin to cry to the Lord, Lord? Mercy. Can you begin to ask the Lord for the reign of mercy? Can you begin to ask the Lord for the reign of mercy? 
Can you begin to ask the Lord for the rain of mercy? God is calling you to the mountain of celebration, of entertainment. You have not conquered the lust for fame, popularity, extravagance, and flamboyance. Are there young people in this house? Can God hear your voices? Can God hear your voices? Can God hear your cry? Ashavalanta branas kayatela. Makatomba yate sabalato bradash. Zabanta kababan salato bradash. Egagagada sagabagabagabash. Zadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
should begin to pray now. The Lord has begun giving me cases already. But the first prayer we're going to begin to pray is, Lord, let my horn be anointed with fresh oil and let my garment be white. Because I see some of you, the reason why you have failed in your intercessory responsibility is because of the fact that the devil has split your heart with a guilt. And as I speak to you, God told me about a certain lady. The reason why you have failed in your intercessory role, you have so much intercessory strength, it was because of a guilt. I won't go deeper than that, that the devil registered in your It was a mistake. But for a while now, you have not recovered from that gift. That gift has plagued your heart. Can you come before the throne of grace and obtain mercy by the blood? Can you begin to engage God right now? Can you begin to engage God right now, please? Can you begin to engage God right now? Can you begin to engage God right now? Can you come boldly? Can you come boldly before the throne? Can you come boldly before the throne? Can you come boldly before the throne and obtain mercy? And find grace to help? Just in case your neighbor is weak, can you help that neighbor in prayers? In Jesus' name. In 
in Jesus' name. My time is short. Let me go deeper into this. My time is short. Because if we start this prayer, it will begin to rise and we won't get out of here in the next two hours. I can assure you. I can assure you. I, w- I didn't know that my time had gone like that. It was already... But, but the Lord just showed me now, there is a lady here, for the sensitivity of what God is showing me now, please, I recommend you see me after the meeting. At least I have to take permission from the Lord for, for that. What he's showing me now is that not too long ago, a scenario happened, you were involved in a relationship and in the course of it, you compromise. It was not deliberate. It was just, it happened so fast and you didn't know. And because of it, you got pregnant, but you had to quickly flush it out. And the devil has used that to haunt you, haunt you, and haunt you so terribly. And the one sweet fellowship and communion you once had with God, you have begun to lost it. And the Lord is asking me that tonight He's going to restore. Yeah. What you carry is, is, is generational. If the devil succeeds, a generation will go. And he's aware. That's why he manipulated. And that young man is nowhere to be found right now. It was after the incident happened that you, you realized that he was not... He was not a Christian. He, he only paraded as a spiritual person. The second thing that the Lord is showing me now is there is someone here you are actually in a job. You are actually in a job and this particular work you got into the job and then you realize that this is what they do there and you know if you continue like this in a long while you will not be a christian anymore and right now the temptation is between you quitting that job or going into the woods and facing penury because at the moment you are like the breadwinner of your family and a lot depends on you that is the person i'm saying please if you're that person in that scenario please can you run out i want to pray with you you are currently in a job or you're doing something and you know what they do there you didn't come in knowingly Came into the job and you know what they do there if you continue there it's not going to be long you're going to be like them but the challenge right now is deciding whether to leave or not to leave see i'm not impressed whether you come out or not i, I will count one to five if you are not here it will pass i have other things to attend to there's no more time if you are that person that is in that category you are working in a place or perhaps you were offered a job and because of survivor you had to please can you run out i'll count one to five if you're not here i'll we'll move out to other things and i'll bless and then i'll get out of the way one two did you people understand what i said hello did you understand what i said you are in a job and that job god is telling you to quit two it's only for the first case that i told the person to see me after just in case you are in the second category and you are feeling too big to come out no challenge three Four. Five. I 
want us to open our mouths and begin to ask the Lord for mercy. I want that particular person to secure a window of mercy because it is very important. A lot is dependent on this person's life. The reason why I'm still appealing is this. What I say in the spirit is that in two years' time, you may not face a blackmail or end up losing your life. If you are that person, please, I beg you. I've, I've, I've faced this kind of scenarios before and I've, I've had to leave the meeting but the word of the Lord came. I gave the word of the Lord as commanded but I left. Can you ask the Lord for mercy? Can you begin to ask the Lord for mercy? For one minute, can you begin to ask the Lord for mercy? Can you begin to ask the Lord for mercy? Please, just cry out, cry out, cry out. Are we praying? Please, can you cry out to the Lord for mercy? Please, can you cry out to the Lord for mercy? It may not consign you directly. It may consign someone that you know or someone that is dear to you. Small instructions like this and Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your truth. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Kadosh, you are mighty. My spirit resonates so strongly with that word that he gave and the intercessor in me will not let you waste your life. You know, many times God brings us in positions to save us. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, mercy, 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 mercy. Can we just cry for mercy? Hold the hand of somebody, just pray for mercy. You may not understand what would happen. You may not understand what would happen. Mercy. 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 
Mercy, mercy, mercy. In Jesus' name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Holy Spirit, have mercy, 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 mercy. Jesus name the Lord bless you and keep you I prophesy over night encounters I take authority over every nightmare it won't happen again I take authority over every nightmare it won't happen again as you sleep tonight, let your little rest, let it rejuvenate you. You come back to this morning later today with freshness, freshness, with strength. We're strengthened with mind from your inner man. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Good night, guys. I love you. Sorry, we're here tomorrow by 8 a.m. So that means what time, guys? What time, guys? <laughs>